we return. So said MacArthur. You know, I, uh, I know sometimes my passion and my, my belief is so strong, it frightens folks. I know that. Not frightens them in a bad way, but I, want it, I don't want it to frighten you. I want it to convict you. I want it to be an indictment that compels you to change your behavior, to change the the way, the path that you are on. And I'm an intense person. I, I don't deny that. Everything I do is intense, and I put 125% into everything. I'm not always successful at it. And you may not even agree with the methodology. You may not agree with the presentation. You know, I've had somebody on Facebook say, one t- or one of those YouTube comments, you know, ah, this guy is, you know, his dramatic pauses. That's who I am. That's how I speak. Can't change that. You may not agree with that. You may not even like it. But I got to ask you, doesn't the message resonate with you? Because if it does, then it's, I've served my purpose. I've indicted and convicted you. Not in a bad way, in a way to show, educate, inform, motivate you to be active to take to, to be to be activated that's why we use the mantra educate inform motivate and activate it's imperative that somebody rally the troops somebody's got to do that you may not like the particular manner or method by which i rally the troops but You know, for those of you who would be a naysayer out there, let me ask you, what are you doing? Or are you just sitting around in your underwear in your basement typing in negative comments? Things are getting dicey. And I don't think... Most people have either acknowledged or are willing to acknowledge how dicey they really are. I mean, the topic for this particular episode or segment is Monsanto and how they defeated grassroots efforts in, in, their, in, their, in Washington state in this last election. You know, I just the segment I just did was about Colorado seceding and how that should be a motivating factor for us. And it was a part of the, you know, election that just occurred, right? But are are you recog- are you cognizant of the fact that at the same time we are we were just defeated in in only in Washington state, I'll grant you that. But we were just defeated in something as simple as getting a true labeling law that says you should know when your food is genetically modified. Is that too much to ask? Where's the FDA on this issue? I mean, you know, they make you, they, they put warning labels on everything for every ridiculous, idiotic thing. I mean... You, you, you tear open a new product you buy, and it's wrapped in a plastic bag. And what do they make them put on the bag? Do not allow your child to put this over their head so they won't suffocate. But we can't get them to force food producers to put a label on a can that says, this product contains 
<clears throat> genetically modified organisms that are and have, br- have been proven to be empirically dangerous to your health. Gee, I wonder where their motives came from. And you know how Monsanto accomplished it? They spent $22 million. $22 million to defeat an initiative on a state ballot. You want to know what's even worse? Out of that $22 million, guess how much of it came from average, everyday, Joe Sixpack citizens in the state of Washington? $550. Mm-hmm. 550 lousy, measly, dirty dollars. So that means that all the rest of that $22 million, it all came from the, the industry... That is, and I can tell you who they are. They're listed here in this article. This is from InfoWars. DuPont, Bayer, Monsanto, Dow, AgroSciences. These are the same corporations that, one, dominate the food supply, and two, and more importantly, stand to gain financially by you not knowing what's in your food supply. Is it too much to ask that you know what's in your food? I don't think so. And as much as the Colorado secession vote that I talked about in the last segment, as much as that was a victory, this was a defeat. A defeat by money against grassroots citizen movement. Well, for the record, Mexico has banned genetically modified corn. Banned it. The Mexican court has ruled effective immediately no genetically engineered corn can be planted in the country. The island of Kauai has passed a law that that mandates that farms who use different pesticides must disclose the presence of those pesticides and whether or not they are genetically modified crops. I'm going to give you a website I want you to go to. So get out your pen and get out your paper and write this down. It's called truthfarmer.com. Truthfarmer.com. This is run by a friend of mine, a, a wonderful and, and, and brilliant patriot, Doreen Hannes. Doreen is very knowledgeable, extraordinarily committed, like the woman I was telling you about in that last segment about the Common Core. Just, you know, another regular American. She puts this blog up or at her own cost and expense. She goes out to speak at different groups. She co-chairs a, a private, uh, or, I'm sorry, a private, a PRC, a property rights council coalition, <clears throat> all voluntarily. Nobody pays her anything. I mean, everybody goes at those PRCs and they, they drop a dollar or two in a, in a can to help cover a cost for gasoline to drive out there. But, I mean, nobody pays her way. Nobody pays my way. I do this voluntarily. Nobody pays Stacy's way from Moms Against Common Core. We're just citizens. We are the grassroots. You know, maybe we're the loudest bells on the cow, but... And we're, when we see stuff like this where Monsanto throws $22 million 
at defeating a grassroots initiative that actually does nothing other than give you one more bit of information by which you can make an informed decision about your own health and your own welfare and that of your family and the children that you're feeding with that product. I got to tell you, it's discouraging. How is it that the people in Washington state could be so blinded that they would reject an initiative that says, all you got to do is put on the on the label of the can what's in the can. How can the public be so brainwashed? And how can they be so brainwashed for a mere 22 million bucks? <laughs> I got to tell you, Go to Doreen's website at truthfarmer.com and look at some of the empirical proof of the studies that have been done about genetically modified organisms. And oh my gracious, you will go through your cabinets and start throwing stuff out. Why is it that nations around the world are banning genetically modified organisms, but the United States refuses to do so? Why is it that my state senator, Roy Blunt, who's a Republican and theoretically a conservative, when Roy uses the word conservative, that means he wants to conserve what we have. And frankly, where we stand right now ain't worth conserving. We live in a police state <laughs> ruled by a bunch of plutocrats and autocrats and corporatocracies. And he, because Monsanto is headquartered in my home state in St. Louis, Monsanto wrote a bill called the, we call it the Monsanto Protection Act. Wait, I mean, if you don't know what this is, if this is their first time understanding this, or you've just kind of heard it peripherally, what, I don't know what a GMO is. Let me tell you what the Monsanto Protection Act states. And then you tell me how much money it took to bribe a senator and a whole bunch of other senators to pass this, and House members. You know what the Monsanto Protection Act says? Uh, all right, I'm going to give it to you in a nutshell. It says that even with the empirical proof that is out there, the medical studies and the diagnoses that have been done, and all of the empirical science, that genetically modified products are dangerous to your health, lead to early, early onset of cancer and Alzheimer's and diabetes and a host of other life-destroying diseases, even with all that empirical proof, Monsanto has a free pass from all limitations. Let me explain to you how that works. In this bill, for the first time in history, for the first time in the history of America, perhaps in the first time in the history of the world, a company has been given a get-out-of-jail-free card. And here's what it says. Despite all the empirical proof out there, Monsanto was protected and immunized and can operate with impunity, that no criminal nor civil lawsuit can be brought against them by any citizen based on government guarantee in this act, nor can any future legislation be passed to eviscerate that statement. What the heck does that mean? I mean, we can... Let's understand the, magna the, the, the magnitude of this. We can change our Constitution with an amendment, and yet Monsanto is given a 100% pass that no Congress in the future or this one can modify its right to produce and deliver and have eaten by America a product which is known to be dangerous. Just put that in your pipe for a minute and smoke it. <laughs> My goodness. I mean, what kind of insanity is that? What kind of treason is that? And I'll tell you right now, I don't care what other 50 states you're in. 
the odds are extraordinarily high that your alleged representatives voted for it and approved it. Some of them. Multiple times. Do you know how many hundreds of millions of dollars a year Monsanto spends to bribe lawmakers and legislators? Folks, it's criminal malfeasance on the recipient's part of that money to accept it and follow the act of Monsanto and whatever they want to do. Monsanto wrote the act and then gave the money to Roy Blunt to get it approved. Roy was the sponsor. He got a bunch of co-sponsors on. And walla walla bing bong, here it goes. Races through Congress like crap through a goose. Most Americans didn't even know what happened. Go type into your browser the Monsanto Protection Act. Yeah, my own traitorous senator is responsible for that. I'm embarrassed to say. And a Republican at that. So anytime you think that I take a biased position on one side of the political or ideological fence or another, let me tell you something. My goal and my motivation is this. I'm not biased. I hate all politicians of any stripe, any color, any shape, any size, any form. You know why? Because all of them are co-opted, compromised, coerced, and traitorous. There's not a single one that is not in some way, shape, or form betrayed their constituencies. Oh, I I got a couple of names I can give you of people who have acted responsibly. But the truth is that 99.9% of the 535 people who represent this nation, allegedly represent this nation, have betrayed it. And I got to tell you something. Statistically speaking, in your own state legislature, the numbers are probably not a whole lot different. Yeah, you got Ted Cruz out there. And I, I applaud what Ted Cruz did and what he does. He's actually, for the first time, stepping up and saying, I'm going into Congress and I'm walking in here as a warrior swinging a sword. That's what I want. That's what I want from my congressman. I want him to go in there and start a fight. I want my my representative to walk in there and say, I'm going to change what's going on here. And I'm not taking money from Monsanto. And I'm not taking money from all of these lobbying groups on K Street. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to walk over there, and I'm going to kick him right in the shins. And when he looks up at me in surprise, I'm going to land one crack right on his jaw. That's what I want my representative to do. I don't mean physically. I'm talking analogously here. I want him to walk right up to the industry giant, the agri-tyrants in the country, in this particular instance, and I want him to walk up there and have that agri-tyrant smile at him and say, oh, good morning, Senator. I am so pleased to see you. And as he slips out the $5,000 handshake, I want my Senator to haul back with his right leg and kick him so hard square in that shin And when the industry tyrant looks up at him in surprise and his eyes open up to the size of saucers, I want him to follow it up with a right cross to the jaw. That's what we put him in office for. Not to sit there and accept bribes while selling us and our birthright out like a bowl of, for, for a bowl of Esau's soup. Let me tell you something. Your Congress people aren't any different than mine. 
you're one of those people who says, everybody in Congress ought to be kicked out. But my congressman, he's responsive. She's responsive to me. You're fooling yourself. Go have a frank conversation with yourself in the mirror. But America, it's time to arise. It's time to be counted. It's time to be fierce, to be fearless, to be courageous. It's time to speak out, even when your voice shakes. You've been listening to America's Voice Now. I appreciate you riding with us this morning. I know sometimes I get intense, but that's because I believe firmly and strongly in what we need to do as a nation. But I can't do it alone. It either comes with a massive, peaceful, civil, disobedient movement in this country of literally tens of millions of us or I'll just be the first sheep to get lopped, to get my head lopped off when I raise it up. Question is, are you going to stand with us, with me? It doesn't have to be me per se. You may not even like what I do or how I do it. But you know what? Put that out of your head for a moment and forget the delivery guy and just accept the package. If you don't like the UPS delivery guy, you don't like the way he looks, you don't like the way he talks, you don't like his method of delivery, that's okay. But the package is here in front of you. The knowledge is here in front of you. And that's all the motivation you need to open the box. You've been listening to America's Voice now. Thanks for riding with us this morning. I appreciate you. Please find us on the web at americasvoicenow.org, facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now, and our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now. In fact, just type in America's Voice Now into any browser and you'll find us all over the place. We have a brand new uh, podcast format up on our website right below the video window, which is alive only, obviously, when we're streaming live. Um, listen, share us with your friends. You know, your friends may not be as against the delivery as you are, so the delivery man. So, you know, share us with your friends and say, you know what, I don't even care if you don't watch the video, just listen to it. And maybe this guy will make some sense. We need every patriot we can get. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless.